What is up party people? Today I'm gonna to show you how to integrate Go High Level with any other CRM. And so just so you know that I'm talking about when it comes to high level, I have over 160 active clients for my Go High Level SaaS. You can see here's me receiving a reward up on stage. And here's just my Stripe last three months. You can see averaging about 20K per month. And then if we just go to month to date, you can see a little over 11K for a month to date. And it's December 17th, so that all kind of checks out. So yeah, here's exactly how you do it and why it matters. So we're gonna use a couple tools here. I'm gonna go over the three main ways that I do it for my clients. But really the main reason we wanna do this is because this allows us to sell Go High Level as an add-on service. It allows our clients to have to do less manual work, transferring data from one CRM to the other. And this makes it a lot easier to sell Go High Level because you're just selling it as, hey, we're gonna integrate into the systems you're already using. But a lot of times when people get started with High Level, they try and sell High Level as a full CRM that they, the business can use for everything. And what happens is that means it's a lot of work for the client to have to learn how to use and the client have to train their team on how to use and they have to transfer all their operations over to something different, which requires a lot of change. And there's a big cost when it comes to change in any business. And so what we wanna do is we wanna position go high level, position how we sell go high level or what outcomes we provide. And we want to just sell it as an add-on service that, hey, you don't have to change anything. We'll get integrated into what you're doing and it's just gonna work. So in my example, we help local businesses get more Google reviews so we can just sell it as, hey, don't change your CRM, don't change your booking system, you don't change anything. You're just gonna be starting to send out review requests and get reviews on autopilot because we're gonna integrate. When we go through this integration process, there are thousands of different CRMs and tools that your clients could use that you need to get integrated with, but I'm gonna go over the three main buckets that they all fall under. And when it comes to when it comes to doing that, I use three, you can use three tools, Zapier, Pably, or Make, we can go into kind of the benefits of each one of them, but if you stick around to the end, I will show you the three main use cases I see for this, and then um, a tip on how I use it and how it'll make me over $200,000 this year. And so if we go into the actual process and the different ways we get connected, you can see here's the most common ones. So you're either gonna have to get connected via sign-on, so you're gonna need them to log in to one of these accounts and then, and then click on connect, and sign on to their CRM. For example, if it's Jobber, they're gonna have to like log on to their Jobber under your Zapier account, and I'll show you how to do that. Another one you can do is you can do an API key. And so this is actually the easiest, uh, in my opinion, it's the easiest because you don't need access to anything, you just need to show them where to find their API key in the software they use, and then they just send that to you, and then you can just plug it in and get connected. Um, the third one is a webhook. And so this is basically, they might not be able to give an API key or sign in, but the CRM they use might be able to fire webhooks under certain conditions. And so you can basically set it to when, when X happens, fire a webhook, and then we'll show you how to um, send that webhook to them so they can fire it off, and also how to catch that data and send it wherever you want to in your high-level account. And the last one, this is actually what I started with, because this was just the only thing I thought was possible was just to, is direct access. And this one honestly sucks. What it is, what I'm saying when I say direct access, it's basically getting them to add you to their CRM. And this would be fine if you could do, if they could just add you as the lowest level tier user and then you can connect everything. But a lot of times to manage apps and integrations, so if you're logging on to a job or a house call pro, to go and just connect their job or a house call pro account to other tools, a lot of times you have to have the highest level of access. So that's gonna give you access to everything in their account, their numbers, their revenue normally, like all their customer information, maybe like banking stuff. So that's a really hard sell for somebody that just met you that you're, hey, I need to get access to all this stuff and that's the last resort we want to do and we go these three cover 90% of the use cases and there's a 10% chance that or there's a pretty low chance that Sometimes nowadays certain CRMs are really hard to send information out of and it's because they don't want to. Like the actual CRM they're using, the actual software tool they're using doesn't want to send the information out because they want to keep everything in house. So I'm working with a certain CRM right now what my clients use and they have their own built-in review feature and they don't want to create any integrations to send out customer information when it's time to send a review. They want all their clients using their review feature and that's something you will run into occasionally. Luckily it's not the standard. If if it was that would really suck but yeah so you'll see that case so let's go through each one of these use cases and how we can get connected so the first one we'll just do the sign in one so what this is i'll go here 
this is where when we come into like when you come into Zapier, I'm going to use Zapier as an example. Like I said, you can use Zapier, Pabli, or Make. I think Zapier is far and away the easiest to use. Pabli is the cheapest and pretty easy to use. Um, and Make is cheap and it can do a lot of stuff. So Make is super advanced. It's like Zapier on hard mode. It's it's a lot more flexible than Zapier is. And so if you're advanced, you know how to do stuff like that, or you have you know um, you have experience with Make, then that's great. One thing I will say too is that Zapier has I think. 7,000 plus integrations. So a lot of these tools that we'll use, that our clients use, will just be baked in automatically into Zapier and they're already connected. They might not already be on Make or Pabli. And so that's one of the big reasons why I still go with Zapier, just because it's easy to use and most of our clients, if a, like a CRM is gonna build an integration with any of these tools, they're gonna build it with Zapier first. And so you, you can get the most bang for your buck there with Zapier. But let's go into a sign-in example. So what I used to have my clients do is, hey, oh, just add me as access. And like I said, you have to get like admin access. So now what I do is I just get them to log in to my Zapier account. So it's not the most intuitive process. Like they're not going to just do this without you on an onboarding call, but this is me on a Zoom call with them. I say, hey, go to zapier.com, log in, my email, my user information, password and everything. And then I just have two-factor authentication set up so they can't log in again later. I just make them log out at the end. I give them the code, get them to log in. Then what we want them to do is we want them to come in here and click on apps. So when they click on apps, this page right here is going to pop up and you can see these are just all the different CRMs that I've integrated with for my clients. It just keeps going. There's a bunch of them. And you just want them to look up their app. So I'm just going to use Jobber as an example here. We're going to add a connection. That's what you do. Add a connection, Jobber. And then you see when you go to click and connect a new Jobber account, you see what happens? It pops up with this window to sign in. And so you, this is going to pop up on your client's computer, your potential client's computer, and they can just log in with their email address and their password and then get it connected. And then from there, what you'll be able to do is you will be able to go create a, uh, a zap to send their information in. So let's say if you want to do the review request thing, you can sit, trigger it off of a job closed. And then when you go and click on select right here, their account's just going to pop up. And so I don't want to show all my clients and stuff there, but literally it's select and then you just click on their client's account. And you want to make sure that you're titling these connections, uh, these uh, you're, you're labeling these connections properly because once you have a bunch of clients, it can get confusing. And so once you do that, you're going to go to lead connector. So that lead connector action is basically high levels connection. So it's like kind of the gray labeled version of it. And when you do that, it's going to send information into a specific sub account. And what I do is the, the action is add slash update contact. We'll select. And so when you connect an account, you can connect an account and this is where you go to high level. You go to your specific sub account you want to connect and you go to the settings. So let's just say you're logged in dashboard, you go to settings, you go to business info, you scroll down to this API key and you just copy this key. And so once you copy that key, you can get it connected. So generate key and then we're going to copy it. And then once you do that and then now it's hiding in a window here, you basically paste that API key in right here and then click on yes, continue. And then from there, what it's going to do, it's going to pull up with, uh, it's going to pull up with your accounts. Let me just connect one of these accounts real quickly. I guess it doesn't really matter. So yeah, you can see you can pull up the account. You want to make sure you title it properly. So edit the connection name so you're not getting you know confused with anything. And when it comes to the job or connection, I'll just go ahead and do this. Let's just do this one. And so what you can do here is you can go, you can test this trigger, and you'll see it's going to pull example data through so that you can map the fields. So it's going to pull data through from one of their closed jobs. We can go here and now all we have to do is just map the fields. So you just click on this plus icon here and then you can map the clients, all the clients information dynamically. So every time a job is being closed, it is sending that information into that specific sub account. And so that is the sign in example. It's not crazy complex. You just have to get your client to log in and then just tell them once they connect it, you should want to go ahead and click on either your name and just log out right here. That keeps them from you know having your login or whatever. And and also the two-factor authentication will help with that as well. The other way is the API key. I like the API key. The thing with this is you just have to get your their client your client to share their screen and go find their settings or their integrations tab in the actual CRM they use and go find where they can get their API key. And so for example, with House Call Pro, you have to go to settings, Zapier, and then you can generate an API key for Zapier. And all it is, instead of having to get them to sign on, they just send you that API key. We can trigger it off of a new completed job and we click on select and connect a new account here. And you can see now we can just copy the API key here. 
And then once we push it through, you can, I'll just grab one here. Once you push it through, you can test the trigger and you can pull example data. And then once again, you just wanna select the sub account you wanna send it to, map the proper fields, and then just send it through and just test to make sure it works. So that's like super simple, that's my favorite. And then the last one, it, probably my least favorite, but it still works and it still gets the job done, is the webhooks example. Some of these CRMs will not allow you to do, get the API key to, to integrate and they'll just allow you to trigger a web, webhook to go off after a certain action. So basically what you have to do is you go, have to go to, you have to go to settings of their account and find like integrations, whatever, just all the other stuff we're doing for the API key. And you wanna set up a catch hook and then you want to click on continue, don't change anything there. And then you wanna just copy this webhook link and you wanna send it to their client and their client's just gonna paste it in that little webhook URL spot. So when they go to create a webhook, it'll be, there'll be an, an action, it will look like this. It'll be like, let me just go to Canva and give you an, an awful drawing. Normally it like pops up with a webhook thing. It says, put your URL here, you paste the URL here, there. And then there'll be like a drop down menu where you can say trigger off of job close, new invoice, whatever. And you just want to click on the checkbox next to whatever you want to trigger it off of. And then you just want to submit it. And then you want to send sample data through so that you can map it. So that's the most annoying thing about webhooks is that when you're doing it and you're doing it based off job closed or whatever, you need to get them to basically create a dummy job, close it out. And then from there, you're, you'll get, you'll be able to test the trigger and see how the data comes through. And then from there, you can format it um, and send it into lead connector or high level in this case. And so now that we go through each one of those connections, I, I hope that you know gives you some ideas how to do it. This is more of a framework style video than like showing you how to connect to a specific one. I think it'd be more helpful over the broad terms, because like I said, there's 7,000, 10,000 different of these systems, and they're all a little bit different, but they all fall into these main buckets. Um, and so I want to go over three use cases, three use cases of when you could use this and when it would make sense. And so number one would be chat widget and like a pop-up form for free leads. And so this can be a, a simple add-on service. This can be part of your main service where if you do a website or you built a website outside of high level, you can install high levels chat widget onto their site. Let's just go and find an example of this real quick. Let's see, let me think. Yeah. So if we go one of my clients, you can see a thousand plus reviews. That's crazy. But if we let this load, you can see you got a chat widget right here. And so chat widget, they can collect this name, email, phone number. Even if the site wasn't built on high level, you can still text, email them the information. Or like I said, we can do this integration here. Basically, you just have the same sort of step where it's like something happens and you send it somewhere else, but the trigger is gonna be lead connector. So in this case, if you're collecting leads from lead connector, you probably want to set up a pipeline in lead connector so that it creates an opportunity in their sub account when and they get a new lead. But the trigger event will just be pipeline stage changed, you select the sub account, and then now we can just send now we can send this information into say a jobber or something like that. And so that way it's going from high level to their CRM instead of the other way around. And you can do the same thing with a pop-up form. When you get a pop-up form, you're on an e-commerce site, hey, get 10% off or something like that. You can just install these onto their website so they're just getting more leads and you're not really having to do anything. But when you send the leads over, you say new lead from Review Harvest, new lead from your business. So it looks like you're doing a great job and getting them business. Two would be lead follow-up. So if they're getting leads from Facebook, they're getting leads from their website, but you wanna send them into high level to have a text and email follow-up sequence, it's the same situation here where you're just sending them exactly as I showed, you're sending it from somewhere else. Maybe it's a Facebook lead form. Maybe it's a third party like lead generation tool that they use like Yelp or something. I don't know. And you're sending it in here so you can follow up with text and email. You can have an automation set for that. And that's a good way to use it. And the third way is just what I do. So Google review automation example of kind of what we're showing here, like a new job was completed. We want that name, email, phone number of that contact so that we can go out and request a review and, and make our client happy. So I hope this video was helpful. If it was, I I've got plenty of other videos about how to make money with review with Google reviews using high level selling this to local business owners and other ways to use high level as well. So if you sign up with my affiliate link down in the description, you'll get access to our community. In this community, we've got coaching calls, so two or three week, weekly coaching calls with me where we hop on and go over any questions you may have. And then I've got a whole bunch of content in here like my snapshot, how to fill out the snapshot, how I get clients, sales call recordings, onboarding call recordings, all that stuff and then also just a backlog of all of our coaching calls.
calls and the community is super active, engaged, over 100 people in here, always talking, always helping each other out. And if you are interested in making some money with high level, making some money online, it's it's a, it's a definitely, it's hard, but it's definitely worth it. So feel free to sign up with my affiliate link down below in the description. You'll get access to all this. But other than that, if you want to learn how I make twenty thousand about $20,000 per month selling Google review services to local businesses, click this video here. I think it'll be helpful for you. Peace.